Teddy, stand back. Th threaten? What? Just stand back. Bloody and bruised from battling down the bars and shoulder barging a couple of doors to reach him, Threnody only motioned him away from the bars. She kicked and kicked and kicked and... Clatter. Threnody, holy hell. Wendy, said Threnody. Teddy snapped to attention immediately. Wendy, he repeated, as Threnody helped him to wrench free of his chains. The two of them made much quicker progress together in getting to Wendy, but now it started to become evident that they weren't the only ones moving around in the chandry. The sound of doors and footfalls weren't far from them. Just go! Wendy hissed as Threnody laid into the bars. Teddy braced her to help absorb the recoil. Seriously, go! It's not worth the risk of getting caught. You can just leave me. I promise it's okay. Raphael can't make me do anything if you two aren't here to threaten. I know the eldest is meant to protect your younger siblings, when, but you've been looking after us plenty already, said Teddy, pushing Threnody through the gap in the bars and squeezing in after her. Now it's our turn, Threnody whispered. Pace yourself. We need to do this fast or it's going to hurt. She clasped both hands around one of Wendy's shackled wrists and stood on the chain so that it was taut. Teddy mirrored her actions with the other. On the count of three, all three of them yanked hard. As they ran, Threnody could hear Wendy's steady stream of muttered expletives on the one side of her and Teddy's laboured breathing on the other. And behind, the footsteps were getting faster and closer. When they reached the door, all three of them threw themselves at it in turn until it flew open and the brisk night air flowed in. Don't! The apprentices all whirled around. None of them had heard Raphael angry before, and now he was bearing down on them, face blanched white with fury, eyes focused on them like lasers and levelling a pistol at them. In a split second, it became blindingly clear to Threnody what needed to be done. Run! she yelled. Wendy and Teddy didn't need telling twice. They bolted out the door into the night, and Threnody ran right at Raphael. None of them had expected it, just as she had counted on in the instant it took for her to make the decision. It didn't occur to Wendy and Teddy that she wouldn't run with them. It certainly didn't occur to Raphael that she would try to take him on alone. But she knew that if this played out any other way, Raphael would have yelled Rebecca before Wendy and Teddy could get away. Those two were faster than her. She was stronger than them. It was the only logical solution. And judging from the rare look of complete surprise on his face as she charged towards him, it wasn't something Raphael had planned for. Threnody's hand closed around his wrist, forcing the gun to point up into the rafters right as it went off. She winced at the sound, but didn't let up on her momentum, swinging at Raphael with a right hook. You little... Raphael seized, trying to get his hand free. Threnody kicked his feet out from under him and tackled him to the ground. Once he was pinned, she slammed his gun hand repeatedly against the floor as he desperately tried to regain control of it, until finally he let go with such force that it skittered away over the concrete. One hand holding down his arm and her knee lodged against his chest, Threnody brought her already bloody free hand down on his face. She managed to get three solid punches in before he scrambled to grab her wrist with his unpinned hand and forced her arm back. She snarled and tried to pull free, but Raphael seemed to be running on enough adrenaline to keep her off balance for a moment, and in that window he let go of her wrist and punched her right in the throat. Threnody gasped and choked, and Raphael used the temporary weakness to push her off his chest and attempt to force her to the ground. "'Guards, here!' he bellowed, throwing an elbow into Threnody's face hard enough to knock her down. "'Storage facility! Escaped prisoner!' Threnody could see him reaching for the gun she had made him drop, and brought her knees up sharply into his gut. He grunted in pain, but before she could act further, he was on top of her, pinning her with his knees on either side of her waist, and his hands fastened around her wrists. "'Fine,' he panted. "'Be difficult. I think I can manage to hold down a pathetic whelp like you for the few minutes it will take for the guards to reach us.' As Threnody struggled to displace him, she tried not to think about what was waiting for her if she failed to get away. Reinforced metal pressing at her from all sides at best, the barrel of a gun at worst. She wondered briefly, in fact, if maybe it was the other way around. It became increasingly likely that she would find out. For all the Threnody's strength, she was still malnourished and fatigued. The thundering adrenaline that came with knowing Teddy's life hung in the balance had lent her aid, but now it was Raphael, well-fed and exercised and full of rage, who had the upper hand and she looked up into that hateful face of his just as it was starting to settle into a self-satisfied smile, and she couldn't stand it any more. 
First she spat straight in his eye, causing him to cry out in disgust and jerk and surprise. Then she surged forward and banged the crown of her head right into the bridge of his nose. He let out a roar of pain and released one of Threnody's arms as he instinctively brought a hand to his now bloodied nose. "'It won't help you, Threnody. He breathed, voice ragged and low. "'You're only making it worse for yourself.' In response, Threnody shot her free hand forward and closed it around his throat. Caught off guard again, Raphael scrabbled at her hand with his own, the lower half of his face now slick with blood. Mm. Don't be ridiculous, Trinity. He recovered enough to choke out. You're not strong enough to... to... Her hand was tightening like a vice. His eyes widened in alarm as he struggled to pry her hand away with both of his. Threnody only let go when a well-placed blow from her other fist sent Raphael sprawling, his legs now only limply tangled around her. She shoved him the rest of the way off her while he was still gasping for air and leapt to her feet. He was not prone, his arms thrown above his head, his neck was exposed. Almost dizzy from exertion, Threnody raised her foot in the air, ready to bring it down hard on Raphael's neck. Her legs were strong enough to kick down iron bars. She knew she could shatter his spinal cord. All she had to do was stamp down with enough force. Raphael wasn't looking at her. He was still focused on getting his breath back. He didn't know what was coming. For all of two seconds, Threnody stood, balanced on one leg, poised to kill Raphael. But the finishing blow never came. Suddenly Raphael's eyes were on her, and he acted quickly, grabbing her ankle and yanking hard so that she stumbled and fell. Her head swam. She could have done it. She had an opening. Why didn't she do it? She was dimly aware of Raphael trying to restrain her legs, and without thinking she started kicking out desperately. She felt her foot make contact and elicit a pain groan from her opponent. She staggered to her feet, only to find Raphael pushing himself upright too. It wasn't too late. She could still end this. She lurched forward, crying out ferociously, a whirlwind of fists and fury. Raphael, blood dripping from his nose and mouth, tried to fend her off with increasing frustration and the occasional command of, Stop this! or Enough! All that seemed important anymore was to keep hitting Raphael until he stopped moving. All other concerns had left her, including self-preservation. She barely heard his shouts anymore. She didn't hear the sounds of armoured boots on the floor. Moments after she finally landed a punch that sent Raphael stumbling to the ground, she heard the gunshot. She heard it first. Then she felt herself drop. Then came the pain. Threnody screamed out in agony, pressing both hands to the bullet wound in her thigh, feebly attempting to stem the flow of blood. Blurred through the fresh tears filling her eyes, Threnody saw Raphael remain motionless for a moment then climb calmly to his feet and start adjusting his lab coat. No, no need. She could hear him saying to some voiceless raiders somewhere outside her range of sight. She's neutralised. No, not the cell. Yes, I have something in mind. She couldn't hold on to consciousness any longer. She blacked out from the pain. Threnody swam in and out of consciousness primarily only aware of being overwhelmed by pain, anger and fear. Somewhere in the haze she realised the bullet wound in her leg was being bandaged and she felt the sting of a stimpack. Raphael wasn't going to kill her then, at least not right away. Somehow she knew better than to be relieved about that. When everything started to ache and her head throbbed dully with pain, Threnody knew she was coming around properly. The wound wasn't healed, the agony that came with the bullet still screamed through her upper leg. But she could tell the stim pack had done its work, and that she probably wouldn't die of blood loss. Her next realisation, after the instinctive assessment of her condition, was that she was being held. Four strong arms were gripping her, a pair on each side. Her own arms were pinned, and her legs were trailing on the ground. She was being carried. She came to her senses with a jolt, and quickly tried to struggle free, but the men carrying her just gripped tighter. The restraint only panicked her further, and she thrashed about more, trying to kick out with her legs. But her right leg, which bore the bullet wound, burst into a fire of pain, and she gasped out, letting it drop limp. It dawned on her that the bullet was probably still inside. God's sake, Threnody, a familiar, hated voice was saying. 
she glowered ahead to see Raphael standing in front of her. He had clearly cleaned himself up a bit, but his clothes still bore splatters of blood, and bruises were starting to form on his face. If he was in pain, though, he hid it. Stop squirming around like that. Have some dignity. Threnody's breathing quickened with anger. I'd calm down if I were you. He glanced briefly to one side, and without thinking, Threnody followed his gaze. There was a long metal box on the ground, the right dimensions to hold an average human body. Even at just a glance, Threnody could tell it was strongly made, probably heavily reinforced, and a glance was all she could manage. The hinged lid was open, showing the space inside, and for Threnody, that confined a space didn't bear thinking about. It's a coffin, she muttered, staring at the ground ahead of her. As she said it, the implications occurred to her. Are you going to kill me? Though she was avoiding looking at Raphael, she could almost hear his smug smirk in the silence that followed. After a moment, there were footsteps advancing, and then a hand under her chin forcing her to look up. She was looking into Raphael's glinting eyes and vicious smile, and it made her feel ill. Then he leaned forward and whispered in her ear, You wish. Threnody realised exactly what he had planned a split second before he said to the guards, Put her in. No, no! Threnody screamed, desperately trying to wrench free from her captors. Please! She cried as they hauled her to the coffin. Please don't! Please! I can't! Please! The tears that sprung from her eyes were born not only of terror, but also disgusted herself from not being able to keep from begging. The two raiders forced her bodily into the coffin. Threnody could barely see anything through the tears, and yet she was still aware of Raphael's eyes on her as she flailed and yelled, Just kill me! The lid slammed down. Threnody let out a long, tremendous roar, beating at the lid with her arms and legs, even as she felt the scrape of metal on metal as the bolts were slid shut. She was sealed in. The roar died away when she ran out of breath and dissolved into a series of gasps and sobs. She could feel the cold metal at the crown of her head, at the soles of her feet, squeezing at her shoulders and hips under her back and bearing down so close on her front that she could almost taste metal when she breathed in. It was... it was exactly her size. She squeezed her eyes shut and tried, tried to imagine she was somewhere else. A wide, dusty field... A rooftop, close to the sky. The open road, a journey ahead of her. The feel of metal pressing in all around her. Oh God. Oh God. It was so difficult to breathe, but she forced herself to try controlling it. She counted the seconds for each breath, in and out, trying to slow them down. Every few seconds she broke down into erratic sobs again, but she kept trying. Oh, God. There was no Wendy or Teddy here any more to bail her out by agreeing to perform whatever procedure Raphael demanded. She needed to find something else to think about. Wendy and Teddy, yes. Wendy and Teddy, safe, out of Raphael's reach. The thought helped her breathe just a tiny bit more easily. She kept counting in and out. She needed to tune out the feeling of being closed in, being crushed, being suffocated. Another sob escaped through her attempts at measured breathing. Damn it, she couldn't even wipe away her tears. At least in the safe she had been able to move her arms a little. In here they were pinned by her sides. She took a long, deep, shuddering breath and tried to push up against the lid with the palms of her hands. As she expected, there was no give at all. There was a creak of metal, as weight was placed on the coffin from above. Threnody shook violently all over. There was a knock on the lid from the outside. Are you done having your tantrum yet? Came a soft, unbearably sardonic voice. Go fuck yourself, she whispered. Charming. She half heard, half felt the weight shifting above her. 
Raphael was sitting on the coffin, talking down to her. I suggest you get used to your new hideaway. You'll be spending a lot of time here. Bernadie made herself breathe out slowly before answering. So you are killing me. The thought was horrifying and comforting all at once. I'll suffocate. God, you're slow. Haven't you got your eyes open in there? Threnody's face scrunched up in frustration, but then, slowly, she eased her eyes open. There was a little light reaching her. The coffin's lid had in it a small grill over her face. She couldn't see out of it, not properly, though she thought she could see a hint of blonde hair and white coat. Her lip curled at the thought of Raphael looking in at her. Fence, she grunted, then closed her eyes again. Her fists were clenching hard enough for her jagged nails to leave grooves in her palms. Her breath was starting to catch in her throat again. You th think that putting me in in here will, will make me do what, what you want? She pushed out past gritted teeth. There was silence for a moment. Then, no, no, I don't. There was a sound of fabric sliding on metal and then footsteps walking away. Threnody could hear Raphael murmur something, presumably to one of his raider guards, and then the door clicked shut. Threnody felt all at once too big and too small. Too small to burst out of the coffin to push it apart from the inside, and woefully too big, pressing the limits of her prison unable to move. She couldn't stand being trapped like this. She alternated between pushing her hands and feet at the metal in a feeble attempt to get something, anything, to shift, and trying desperately to recoil into herself, anything, to give her even a hair's breadth more space. But no matter what she did, she was closed in, trapped, and she couldn't stand it. The closeness of the coffin walls invaded every one of Threnody's senses. She could hear the air ringing in her ears as it lay, still and trapped with her, she could see the darkness through her eyelids like piles of dirt being shoveled on top of her. She could feel the metal hard against almost every part of her, forcing the breath from her. She could smell and taste the stale air and the tang of metal slowly drowning her without water. It was so difficult to breathe. She wasn't sure how much longer she could keep it up and she had no idea how long she'd have to.